Students can currently keep a gun in their car on campus. The gun just needs to be in a case like this one and out of plain sight. According to UCF police officials, if you are caught violating the pedestrian crosswalk, you could face a fine of over $62. Claim that Weston and Sydney's victory was actually due to their use of food. Now we talked to university officials and they said this isn't the case. The FDA is currently working on regulations that will require vending machine companies to post nutrition facts on the machines themselves. Even online dating itself has changed since Pew's last study in 2005. Now, 3% of U.S. adults, including one out of every 10 aged 25 to 34, uses dating apps such as Tinder on their cell phones. If you're looking for a good laugh, you might be interested in this event. UCF Police Department officials ground. want students to be safe you in all situations. Well. That's why they're suggesting because students take I classes such as this one so they will be prepared. Video. This is Chicken Little. He's a pet chicken. Now residents are wondering what happened to all the wild chickens in downtown Oviedo. Coming up on UCF Nightly News, Nightly News reporter Sarah Smith has been talking to law enforcement officials and students to find out what is being done. Sarah, what have you found out? Well, here's something you may not know. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among college students, and it's also the most preventable. Well, luckily, my plans are going to be on Saturday, so I should stay nice and dry. What about you, Lauren? President Obama was here in Orlando and spoke at Valencia College yesterday about women and the economy. Reporter Claire Davis was there and tells us his plans and what students had to say about his speech. That they would have to, you know, go through. Yeah, you gotta like pep yourself up, talk yourself to get through all 20 hours. Investigators are still questioning the teen who stabbed 19 classmates and a security guard at his Pennsylvania high school this Wednesday. 16-year-old Alex Rybal is being charged as an adult with four counts of attempted murder and 21 counts of assault. Still ahead on Nightly News, football is back. A Florida court ruled early this month that colleges and universities in the state don't have the authority to prohibit guns from being stored in cars. Other universities across the state released new policies last week allowing guns to be kept in cars on campus, and UCF is now following suit. UCF spokesman Grant Heston said the university had to change its policy after the recent court ruling. While the exact policy wording is still being developed, Students can currently keep a gun in their car on campus. The gun just needs to be in a case like this one and out of plain sight. Students across campus have mixed feelings about the new policy. Some feel they have a legal right to have a gun on campus, while others aren't sure about the idea. If students think that they need to protect themselves, they should be able to. I mean, that's part of you know, the Constitution. We should be able to protect ourselves. It seems just really unsettling. Um, just to think that people might be carrying guns in their vehicles. Then again, if somebody is a criminal um, and they have the intent to use that to harm people, they wouldn't really care if the university had a law against it or not. Heston says students, faculty, and staff will be notified when the new policy is officially updated. Reporting in Orlando, Stephanie Wooster, UCF Nightly News. Well, it seems there's quite a few different opinions on this issue. So on last Wednesday when the election results were released, a whirlwind sprouted up on social media that claimed that Weston and Sydney's victory was actually due to their use of food. Now we talked to university officials and they said this isn't the case. If you walked across the student union patio last week, you were probably asked a question. Did you vote for SGA president? You were likely offered pizza, a free smoothie, or other incentives in the hope of getting your vote. Even though students didn't need to vote in order to receive the freebies, judging from social media chatter after the election, many weren't pleased. What's the point of having elections if it's just based on how much uh, money we can blow on food and wackadoos and dominoes and whatnot. I mean, it's not really an election. It's, it's basically a money-tossing competition. However, one university official does not believe food had a big impact on the election. Well, I, I don't think that food is a bribery. Bribery is such a strong word. Bribery means that there's a transaction that happens, that I give you something in exchange for something else. We spoke with student body president Melissa Westbrook to see what her opinion is on the use of food. Um, I don't really necessarily feel like it's bribery because like I, was, I, like I said before, people come and they get the food and don't vote at all. However, this contradicts a bill that she signed late last February. 
According to Bill 4679, nicknamed the Food Ban Bill, food, drinks, and prizes may not be used in elections in the future. The bill goes on to say these items will be considered bribes. Now, the Food Ban Bill will go into effect for the Senate elections this fall. President Westbrook went on to say that she hopes food can return to elections in the future. However, she would ideally like the Elections Committee to handle all voting incentives in an unbiased format to improve voter turnout. Back to you, Marissa. Numbers show crime is increasing around UCF and the police department is doing their part to keep you safe. New crime reports show the number of forcible sex acts on campus more than doubled in the past two years. Thefts and burglaries in the surrounding areas have also gone up. UCF Police Department officials want students to be safe in all situations. That's why they're suggesting students take classes such as this one so they will be prepared. The department holds a women's self-defense class monthly where they can learn to be aware of their surroundings as well as physical tactics. Self-defense instructors warn students not to get too comfortable. We of course think that we're very safe and sometimes we get lulled into a false sense of security. We don't want them to do that. The department has seen an increase in the amount of students taking the class. One UCF student who took the class told me why she feels more prepared to defend herself. A lot of things in this class I didn't know tools and techniques I can use, so it's a lot of things that I learned that I can actually use if anything actually does happen. The department hopes to continue increased enrollment throughout the year. Reporting in Orlando, Stephanie Wooster, UCF Nightly News.